Now he's giving us a choice. That's right. 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 That's for every individual, every man. You know, and it said, whether it be the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's an individual choice. Amen. You know, and I often say, Well, God, I would serve you this way, but I would serve the world that way. And it tells us about being double minded. Mm -hmm. And I must say that when I did meet you, Pastor Stewart, you was not a double-minded man because right. I was looking for some double-minded schemes. <laughs> and we so, often, <laughs> we so often look for a flaw, you know, in the individual, right. you know, not to cast blame on him, but actually to say, well, you know, under the table slide me this, and under the table slide me that. And to return and to be restored means to be total honest today. And and that's a lot of times we don't want the truth. Because God loves us so much, He let us do things to ourselves to prove His unconditional love for us. Because He realized that if He actually said something like Marcus, don't do that, that'll make you do it even more. That's right. <laughs> but Brother Marcus, I just want to ask you a question about yeah. the ministry and and how did you come into the ministry? Well, Brother Lewis, I came into the ministry back, uh, it was the World Overcoming Space Center at that time, mm -hmm. under Pastor, uh, I forget, Pastor Page, <laughs> I mm -hmm. ain't forget his name. But, you know, things happened there, you know, I want to go in, that's a long story. Amen. But, you know, we all decided, you know, we, you know, we all wanted to stay together, you know. So we started having Bible studies over at the house of Joshua. And then we all came into agreement that we was going to start our own church. And uh, I missed a few of the meetings, but I kept in touch with everyone, you know. And um, I've been here, you know, I had my ups and downs, you know, because I'm new at this. But, you know, the Lord has placed it in my heart to stay, you know, for His Word is being, being uh, um, His Word is being taught, you know, we getting taught meat, I mean, you know. As they say in the word, you know, you have the milk. When you first start, they give you milk. But now we all have reached the point where we're being fed the meat of the word, and which is what really is amazing. How this word right here, this is the word of God. And, uh, you know, it's, it's the Bible, it's applicable in our life today. You know, if we live by this word, and if, like, uh, Isaiah 119 says, Amen. if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Amen. And that's that's the truth. You're right about that. Yeah. You shall eat the good. You shall eat the good of the land. You know, you shall eat the bad if you go bad. <laughs> so from the book of Proverbs, I guess Proverbs chapter 4 and 7, it tells us that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Mm, amen. But with all that getting, get understanding. Yeah. We just don't want a understanding because my understanding and the word Amen. understanding may be totally different. Yes, that's true. And we realize that us being the people that we are, we want things to be our way. Amen. So our way of understanding things might not be God's way. But God want each and every individual to prosper. Yes. And he want us to prosper financially, spiritually, emotionally, and psychologically. So he want us to be whole and made whole. Amen. And the thing is here is the return to thy father's house, the way back home, and the way and the course that we choose to take is the word of God. Yes. The direction that God leads us and guides us. Because it tells us in the, in the word that there's a road that is wide. Yes. You know, and it's full of people going astray. Yes, that's that broad And also way. Mm -hmm. it tells us there's a road that's narrow and mm -hmm. thin. And very few people find it, mm -hmm. you know. And I guess it's because they don't have a understanding. Yeah. Well, I just say they don't have understanding. Yes. See. So, so uh, could you uh, expound on that a little bit more for me, Mister? See, uh, in uh, when you go back to the <coughs> to the parable of the prodigal son, mm -hmm. the father represented there is, is 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 God. See, you need to always understand that. See, 
God had created all beings with a free will to make any choice that they want to make. Say, you can, you can choose to do whatever you, you want to do, but you have to always remember there's consequences, and it's displayed here in the story of the prodigal son mm -hmm. when, when he came unto his father and, and asked for his inheritance. See, he, w he was uh, being selfish at that point concerning just himself. He wasn't considering nobody but himself. I've been there and so forth. And then it says it brought him to a low, to a bottom, ground zero. Like it says in the word, it says that there's pleasure in sin, but it's a p passing pleasure. Mm -hmm. And we see that in the story of the prodigal son. And also, we see that the Bible says that he came to himself. Mm -hmm. see? see, first, so in other words, in order for him to come to himself, he considered in his mind. It's, in other words, he repented. He had a change of mind. See, but that was not enough. See, see because God was poised ready and waiting to receive him with open arms. But you notice, God did not move toward him until, not, to, not, not when he thought about it, but when he turned and moved back in that direction. And see, and that's when God moved toward him. And he, and he says that he restored him, see. See, so me, a man being in, in that, that line of, of being radical, riotous, rebellious, and so forth. See, I knew that I had not to, just to, to repent in my mind, but I had to act on what God had set before me. I had to turn from and move to the, the things of God. That's the only way that I, that I could you know, know just the peace and, and know the love and, and the things that God has for me. Amen. That's great. And uh, also, in the story, it tells us about uh, the young man living a life beyond his means. Mm -hmm. In other words, trying to keep up with the Joneses. Yeah. And so often we get deceived with the things of the world. Uh, they look greater than the things that God has to offer. Mm -hmm. But yo and behold, there's a price to pay. But then we realize also that God is there to forgive us all our sins and transgressions. You know, and it tells us about it in the book of 1 John 1 and 9 that God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So it's not that you fall and you stray away from the path of righteousness that you should feel as though you're not saved or that God don't love you. It's just because you have strayed the path mm -hmm. and you hadn't made that change yes. in your lifetime. So what we do is teach man how to live a godly life. Yes and how to overcome the world and everything that's yes. in it. You know, because the world we live in, but the world is not of us. Yes. And we're not of the world. We just live in this world. Yes. And sure, we must do things while we're here in this world, in this life. And the main objective for us today is to go out and proclaim the gospel, the acceptable year of the Lord. Yes. So I would think, you know, to go out into the homes and uh, to the places that we go, I, I know that you go also into the jails, and you're the director of the jails uh, for, for the outreach ministry, Amen. that God Amen. has put a mighty work upon you. And Amen. Isaiah 1 and 19 tells us if we are willing and obedient, mm -hmm. we should eat the good of the land. You know, uh, 30 days clean is not eating obedience, or being obedient unto God. This is a lifetime experience. Yes. It took us a while to get to the place we are at today. It's going to take us a while for God to restore us into a place, you know, that he wants us to be. It's all of them. So the adversary, so we have an adversary. Mm -hmm. And everyone needs to know that we have an adversary. Yes, we have one. And just to share briefly on the adversary, we're not going to give him no credit because he's a nothing and a nobody. And he has no power and yes, authority. Man. So we come man. out to expose him yes. to let the people know that there's nothing or, or no thing that's on this earth that can keep you from prospering in the things of God, from changing from your wicked ways yeah. and walking down the path of that's righteousness right. and living a godly life. That's right. Because in this very story, we notice that the father was seeing his son from afar. Yes. And he mm -hmm. met him and he put a robe upon him in a ring and he killed the fatted calf. 
And that was the part of restoration that God has done unto us. Mm -hmm. He's restored us back to a position of, of upstanding, right standing, right standing. citizens That's right. That's today. Right. Uh, yeah. He has exhorted us upon high. And it's not to a point to where we feel like we're better than anyone or anything. It's just that God has put us in a position where men of higher degree will listen to what we have to say. He said he used the simple to make the wise look foolish. Yes. The wise things of the world. Yeah. So it, he don't need a rocket science scientist. He don't need an Einstein to actually teach the people. All he needs is someone that's faithful. Uh, so often we feel like to give up the life we know and really don't understand is to give up everything, which is nothing. Uh, I so often tell the guys, I started with nothing, I have nothing, and I will not have anything without Christ Jesus. I can yeah. do no thing, nothing. The Word of God tells me that I am lost without Christ in my life. I'm lost without Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I would hate to be one of the men or women to wait to the last day to find out that Jesus was the Messiah and He is Lord God and Savior and all I had to do was confess and to believe. So simple, but yet so hard for many. And find myself in a place of eternal damnation uh, where there will be gashing of the teeth. But see, right here on earth we have hell, right here on earth. And it's a living hell, you know, living in fear. Uh, fear of, of relapsing for some people going back into over drinking, over smoking uh, drugs and shooting up hair running, whatever they desire, that's their God. Uh, the fear of getting broke, the fear of living in poverty, the fear of never having anything. See, that's a fear that God did not give us. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So if you don't know that, you'll be walking around in fear all your life. It's basically when you malfunction, you become confused, obsessed, or sick, or go your, see if you go your father's way, you become creative, because God is a creator, and That's we create right. with our words. That's right. And uh, we can create destruction, discord, or we can create something great. And uh, I truly do thank God for sending a true man of God, because he knew Hallelujah. from my heart it took someone that was sound and pure. It's first following things of God for me to actually want to stay on this course of direction Amen. because the world at the time seemed like it had more to offer, you know, quick money, mm -hmm. fancy cars, uh, nice things. There's nothing wrong with that because you, I realized today that I can still have mm -hmm. good things. But see, we don't want to get confused. See, there's nothing wrong with money. Nothing wrong the with Word money. of God said for the love of money, money is the root. It's of the all. root. 